This evening, by God's grace, we are going to be getting into the Word in order to open the Scriptures to us, and we are starting with how to hear the voice of God. How to hear the voice of God. I believe it is the desire of our Father that all His children will be able to hear Him. It is God's intention that He communicates with all that follows Him. He wants you to know Him. He wants you to hear Him. He wants to speak with you. He wants you to be able to speak with Him. He wants us not just to have a good Lord, but dialogue at all times. In Isaiah chapter 1 verse 19, the Bible says, Come now, let us listen together, says the Lord. That suggests to me that this is a conversation between two parties. God the Father and we, his children. He wants us to have time. He wants us to be able to discuss and communicate together effectively. So tonight, we want to learn how to hear the voice of our God. Praise the Lord. And before we go into learning how to hear the voice of God, I want to bring to us the benefit of hearing God. Just to quickly run through about six, seven benefits that you can enjoy when you can hear God. Now just before we go there, and the word says, if you remember in Isaiah chapter 30 verse 21, Isaiah chapter 30 verse 21, where the scripture says, you shall hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way, walk here When you turn to the right, and when you turn to the left, God himself will speak to you to say, this is the way, this is the right path, walk there. So God speaks to those who are his. Those who are his are expected to understand and to know the voice of God. But generally speaking, God speaks to all that He created. He speaks to all humanity. The problem is those who are not born again will find it so difficult to understand that this is God speaking to them. But to you and to myself, we are supposed to understand the voice of our Creator. We are supposed to understand just as well as to the voice of Daddy when Daddy calls. The voice of Mommy when Mommy speaks. You identify them by their voices because you are used to them. And so also God wants you to be used to His voice. God wants you to understand when He speaks to you. And God speaks to us on a regular basis. And so let's start first by identifying the benefits of hearing the voice of God. Number one, in Proverbs chapter 29 verse 18, Proverbs chapter 29 verse 18, the Bible says, without vision, the people perish. Without vision, the people perish. In other words, without revelation, without a foresight of the future, the people perish. Where there are no revelation about God, the people perish. Now, I like to say clearly, besides that, to say, vision keeps you alive. Vision keeps you alive. God speaks to us in so many ways. And the vision and the revelation of our future is the only thing that keeps people alive. God wants you to have a vision of the tomorrow. He wants you to have a vision of your next year. He wants you to have a vision of your future. And so that vision keeps you alive. It keeps you living. Glory to God. So it's a benefit when you hear God because God will give you vision about tomorrow. That's a very significant benefit. Benefit number two, Daniel chapter 2 verse 22. You have the divine, when, the, when you have divine revelation, it changes your season. When God speaks or instructs you, it changes your season. Every time a man or a woman hears the voice of God, it changes the season you are in automatically. And there are so many examples when the word of God comes to you as an individual, it changes every circumstance around you. It changes the season it finds yourself. So 
the benefits outstanding that we enjoy hearing God's voice is that His voice is a divine revelation to us that changes our seasons. Amen. And we look at that in Daniel chapter 2, verse 22. And it says, He reveals the deep and secret things. He knows what lies in darkness, and light dwells in Him. Light dwells in God. Actually, the scripture says, Our God is light, and in Him there is no darkness at all. God is light. So when He gives us the divine revelation about our lives, about circumstances around us, about our community, about our nation, He is doing that to make sure seasons change. Seasons change, and your seasons will change as you begin to hear the voice of God clear in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Number three benefits. In Isaiah, in the book of Psalms, chapter 62, verse 11, Psalm 62, verse 11, the Bible says, Once have thou spoken, but twice have heard the power belongs to God. Once have you spoken, O God, but I hear it twice. The power belongs to him. Now, every time a man hears God's word, it has a double effect. It resounds in a double way. God's voice doesn't just come naturally. It comes with an effect. It comes with transformation. It comes with power. It comes with ability. So, you can understand this when you realize that what faith when Pharaoh had a dream, when Pharaoh had a dream, God gave him double one dream, but he relayed it in two ways. Same same thing, but in two ways. So every time God speaks to you, he doesn't just whisper to you one time. He says something to you and he repeats it in so many other ways so that there can be confirmation. Most of the times when God speaks to you personally in your heart or in your spirit, He makes sure that He says the same word through the mouth of His servants. Sometimes in a prophetic way, sometimes through your friends, sometimes through other means, sometimes maybe in your dreams, so that you, you have heard this thing one time. And sometimes you wonder where exactly did I hear this thing from? It came first to your spirit mind. And then something else will confirm it. So God's voice always resounds. He doesn't come just one time to give you confusion. There is always a confirmation. So once I've now spoken, but twice or half, the power belongs to God. God is not a man that is human. So if he tells you one thing, one time, get ready. He will definitely confirm it through other means. So that in the mouth of two or three witnesses, the truth will be established. You will not be in confusion whether it is God or not. That's why you can actually see everything God says. You can trace it to His Word. Hallelujah. Amen. Number four benefits. Isaiah chapter 32, verse 21. Isaiah 32, verse 21. And you can marry that also with Isaiah and with Psalms chapter 32, Psalms 32, verse 8. The first one, Isaiah 32, verse 21. The second one, Psalms chapter 32, verse 8. And those scriptures say, I will instruct you, I will teach you the way you should go, I will guide you with my own eyes, and you shall not be. You shall hear a voice behind you saying, This is the way. One day, I mentioned it ahead of time. Each time God speaks to you, there is a divine guidance. Divine, that's the benefit. You have a divine direction, divine guidance. So I am so sure that God has spoken to me, and you know the end of where God asks you to go is going to be peace. The outcome of what God has asked you to do is going to be glorious. Because you're so sure God is leading you. Praise the Lord. That's the benefit. You never go wrong when God is the one leading you. You will never have a regret if God is the one guiding you. Praise the Lord. 
So the number six is the number five of the benefits before we go to how to hear him. The number five benefit is Psalms 119 verse 98. Psalm 119 verse 98. And that says, you have access to classified information. You become wiser than everybody around you. That's the benefit that you operate in a superior wisdom. You operate in what? Superior wisdom. Not the wisdom of man. But because you hear God. And that scripture says, Thou through your commandment has made me wiser than my enemies. Because they are ever with me. God knows we have enemies all around us. And so through his word, through his guidance, through divine instruction, he gives us wisdom that is uncommon. He gives us insight that no other human has. He gives us superior wisdom, superior thinking, so that the steps we take are beyond the natural. So you become wiser than all your contemporaries. That is a significant benefit that we get when we can hear the voice of God. It's a benefit to know how to go when every other person is confused. It's a huge benefit when you know what to do when everyone is stranded. That's a huge, huge benefit that every step you take, everybody sees you as a star. Because it ends well, it ends profitable, it ends gracious and glorious. And people wonder, whence have you got this wisdom? And you can only point up there and say, all glory to God. Praise the Lord. You are praying beyond the natural because of the wisdom that God kept in His Word. You only obey and you manifest greater wisdom. So it's a benefit when you can operate beyond every other person. It's a huge benefit because you are operating in the superior wisdom of God. And number six, benefit that we enjoy when we are able to hear the voice of God. Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse 29, and Daniel chapter 2, verse 22. Deuteronomy 29, 29, Daniel chapter 2, verse 22. It's a benefit that we enjoy from God when the Bible says in Deuteronomy 29, 29, the secret things belongs to God, but the ones that are revealed belongs to us and our children's children. In Daniel chapter 2, verse 22, it says, the deep and the secret things belong to God, but the ones are uh, the views what lies in darkness because it lies in us again. Glory to God. So you cannot in any way confuse the darkness because before your father, light and darkness are the same. And he exposes what is hidden in darkness. The soul Satan cannot trap you in any way because the hidden things he has already been known to you. Praise the Lord. It's a mighty benefit because you have access to classified information. You have direct access to things that ordinary mind don't know. Things that natural men, scientists don't know. You know it. Why? Because God reveals the deep and the secret things. Told you. Praise the Lord. He reveals the deep and the secret things. Told you. Hallelujah. Now, having said that, if you must hear God's voice, you need to make preparation. You need to organize yourselves. You need to be disciplined. You need to prepare. As if you know someone is about to speak to you. Praise the Lord. Now, you can't say, I want to hear God's voice. Or you want your friend to call you through your mobile. But your mobile phone is switched off. You cannot tell me you are expecting a call from the other part of the world or from your partner, your peers in business, or your family. You want to hear, you want to have communication with them. But your phone the, 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 is reduced in volume. Or you put your phone in silence. It will be impossible for them to be able to reach you. For example, if you know, if you put everything on the floor, you mute everything, you just realize that they are speaking, but you can't hear them. Don't take place, it's not noisy. Make sure there is nobody who is ready to distract you from the communication so that you can have an effective conversation. Praise the Lord. So there are some preparations you have to make. 
Number one, is what we get to hear the most. In Proverbs chapter 16, verse 1. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 1. The Bible says, the preparation of the heart is much, but the answer to the tongue comes from God. So God is not going to prepare for you to hear him. You have got to prepare to hear God by yourself. God is speaking and God always speaks to his children. But whether you are hearing or you are not hearing, it is your responsibility. Praise the Lord. So the preparation of the heart belongs to man. But the answer to our prayers comes from the Lord. You need to do the preparation. You need to prepare your heart. You need to prepare that I want to hear God. And if I really want to hear God, I will take care of all distractions. I will take care, I will push anything that can distract me aside. And I will be patient, I will be listening with a lot of quietness. Because I want to hear you. Hallelujah. That's number one. Be ready to listen. Number two, on how you can prepare is first Peter chapter 3 and 7. I use that between the spouses. The other time when I was teaching. And the Bible says, husband, relate with your wives with a lot of sensitivity, a lot of understanding. Knowing that they are weaker vessels, that your prayers will not be hindered. Now, how does that relate to this? It relates in the sense that we are the bride of Christ. The church is the bride of Christ. And the bride of Christ is definitely a relationship with the group. Hallelujah. So the group wants to have fellowship with the bride. Distant. 
He must not bring, he will not come with confusion. Therefore, in order to be ready to hear the voice of Christ, you have to be willing to meditate his word. When you meditate upon the word of God, it keeps your heart in check. It washes your heart and purifies you and prepares you to be able to hear a distant sound from your maker. The word of God does a work in us. It is quick, it is powerful, it is sharper than any to your soul. It prepares our heart. He prepares us to be able to hear clearly what is in the mind of our people. So when we meditate the word of God, it means we are preparing ourselves to hear it. Anyone hear me? And lastly, on the preparation to be able to hear God, you have to write clearly the vision. Some of us, God gave us revelation, God will give us visions. God has certain things that will happen in our dreams that we do not understand. Immediately we wake up, we just forget about that and then we continue with the next job. You need to understand that everything in the law of the believer comes with a meaning. There are no coincidences. Nothing happens by chance. Every part of your life is programmed. So nothing happens to you by coincidence. So every sign Every manifestation, every action around your life has meaning. So if you don't understand, write it down, find the interpretation. Take note of your realities, take note of the events around you, take note of your visions, take note of your revelations, then you are the way to hear the God more clear. Praise the Lord. Seven ways to hear God. Seven ways to hear God. This is very crucial, and I, I have to learn this very seriously in my own time. Over the years now, I'm enjoying it, and it's actually helping me. Seven ways to hear God. Seven ways to hear God. Number one, through the world. The Bible is the second most authentic way to hear the voice of God. Reading the scripture. Reading the scripture. You cannot go wrong reading the scripture. The scriptures is the most authentic way to hear God. When you are addicted or committed to reading the word of God, you are truly, surely, sincerely going to hear God speak to you. God speaks by the word. He speaks according to the scripture. He's, whatever God is going to be speaking to you is not going to be different from what is in the scriptures. Everything that God says to you will be rooted in the scripture. It's the most authentic, most genuine way of hearing God's word. The holy scriptures. Hallelujah. And you see, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 4, declares that the word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any to other soul. Pierce into the divining asunder of the souls, of the spirit, of the bones, of the joints, of the mouth. So, God's word, he says, God's word determines the thought and the intent of the heart. In other words, it pierces into the heart. God's word enters even to the bones. the Lord. It's quick. It's powerful. There is no no obstacle that can hinder God's word from entering into your spirit. God's word it is the most authentic, the most powerful tool that God uses in communicating with us. His word. His word. So if you really, really want to hear God speak to you, you have to be one of those who love God's word. You have to be a man and a woman who is desperate to hear God's word. Who is never tired, worn out, hearing God's word. Who does not give up hearing God's word. A brother and a sister that is determined, always hungry to hear more, always thirsty for the word. And then you will surely be hearing God. 
In the three counts chapter 2 verse 2, the Bible says, Immediately I heard his voice, as he spoke to me, the Spirit enters me. There is what we call the Spirit of the world. The Spirit of the world. Every word of God is Holy Ghost anointed. The Spirit of God works with God's Word. So every time God's Word is read, meditated, or preached, it comes to us by the Spirit. And it makes an impression in our lives. It ministers to us as the voice of God Himself. Hallelujah. Number two. On the seven ways of hearing God, the still small voice. Hallelujah. There is a still small voice in every one of us. There is a still small voice in every one of us. Those who are not born again, they call it intuition. Intuition. Those who are born again, they go beyond intuition. Their human spirit is linked to the spirit of the living God. And God, by the Holy Ghost, speaks through to our human spirit. And so we hear soft, but real. It's a voice in us who believes soft, but true. Simple and genuine voice. And it tells us things. And sometimes it doesn't. How do you know this thing? I just don't know how to explain to you, but I just know that I know that I know that I know that I know that this is the real thing. It means the Holy Ghost. According to Romans chapter 8, verses 14 and verses 10, the Holy Ghost has witnessed to the human spirit about certain things. Praise the Lord. The Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God, has borne witness to the human spirit. That's my child of God. Every child of God has the number one, who have the human spirit, and the Spirit of God, which is the Holy Ghost, who mingles with the human spirit and bring communication from God right to the human spirit and makes you know things that ordinary people may not know. Praise the Lord. Amen. So we have the word of God, the number two, the still small voice. Hallelujah. Number three, God speaks to us through his ministers. Through his ministers. I'm ministering to you now. This is God speaking to you. He says to some of us, he lays a prophet amongst us. He, 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 he employed, he anointed men over us and he empowered them to speak his mind to us. So we hear God's voice through this man, through this woman of God, we hear God's voice. Hallelujah. In Hebrews chapter 10, verse 17, when you get to the check it out, the Bible says, Obey them that have room over you in the Lord. For they watch over your souls, and they must give account to God on your behalf. So they are representatives of God on your behalf. And through them, God speaks to your lives. God gives you direction. In Amos chapter 3, verse 7, the Bible says, God will do nothing unless it first of all revealed to his servants, the prophets. So God gives instructions and information to his servants. With one thing in mind, go give that information to the church. Go speak that word to that sister or to that brother. So we hear God's words through his anointed ministers. Hallelujah. Amen. And then when you get to you can read the book of Acts chapter 21 verse 10. Acts 21 verse 10, you see clearly there was a prophet called Agabus. Agabus, when, when Paul was warming up and getting up to go to, uh, he wanted to go to Jerusalem. And then the prophet, the prophet never met him. But as the prophet came into the environment Paul was, the spirit of God spoke through him and said, he, he just took a garment somewhere and he, he held up to the garment and he began to bow, to bind himself. And he said, whoever is the owner of this garment, what this garment is blaming, what I'm doing to this garment 
is exactly what they would do to the order of the God. The person was not going to Jerusalem. He was talking about Paul. The one Paul could not go to Jerusalem. And before that time, there were other brethren that already warned Paul, don't go to Jerusalem, don't go to Jerusalem by the Spirit. The Bible was careful to say, the Spirit made them warn Paul. Then another prophet came, Adam, and warned Paul, don't go to Jerusalem. He was disobedient, and then he went, and that was the beginning of his incarceration. Hallelujah. So, through God's anointed ministers, we hear the voice of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Number four, we hear the voice of God through visions, through visions and revelations. For example, there is an open vision. There is another one. An open vision is through trance. You are not sleeping, but just you were cut off into a realm. And it was like you are in a situation where you have seen the video playing before you. And God showed you pictures to describe the event and show you situations. That is a vision, an open vision. It could be during the day, it was could be during the night, but clearly you are not sleeping. You are not sleeping at all. Through an open vision, we can hear from God. Hallelujah. And God gives us this many times. Through open vision. You are awake, but you are caught up into a bed. We can see that in Acts of Apostles chapter 10 verse 10. Acts 10 verse 10, and from verse 10 to verse 11. And this was Peter. Peter and God, and there was a man called Cornelius, who was a righteous man according to the scripture, who was praying day and night, asking for God to visit him and intervene in his life. And God answered his prayer, and the same time God was visiting Peter in another city nearby. And Peter, while he was just waiting for food to be ready, he was caught up into a vision. And he saw two men coming from the other city, coming for him. No, 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 before then, he saw the heavens open and a sheet was let down from heaven. And all manner of reptiles and all manner of things was on the top. And the Lord came from heaven and said, Peter, rise up and kill your feet. And he said, no, 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 I don't need to clean things. I don't need to clean things. Rise up and I don't need to clean things. You know, this is why we need interpretation. Not everything you see in dreams exactly is exactly the way you saw them. It requires understanding. Like I was saying yesterday, God was trying to tell him, Peter, I'm about to take you to a dimension you have never been before. I'm going to send you on an errand that I've never sent you before. I want you to get out of the box. I want you to go into another dimension of ministry. And I don't want you to complain about anybody. I want you to be open hearted. I want you to be able to minister to wherever and whoever I bring you to. I want you to be very liberal. But Peter was strict, telling God, I don't do this, I don't do that. And God told him, Do not ever call on clay what I have claimed. Praise the Lord. That happened in the trance, in the vision. So God speaks to us in what? In a vision. Number five. God speaks to us in dreams. Dreams in the sense that you'll be sleeping. When you are sleeping, God's angels will come and play videos into your soul, to your spirit, to show you things that is to happen. Mm. Or to bring information from your past that you do not know anything about and to reveal to you. Or to give you a winning streak so that in your business you will know what to do to generate money that others cannot do. There are visions, there are revelations that comes to us in our dreams. That's why we don't trivialize your dreams. You don't discard your dreams until you deal with them. 
until you understand them. You don't just push them away. They are vital points of communication that God uses. Hallelujah. Is somebody here ready to write that? And the next one, we can see that God was communicating, and that happens not just to believers. It happens even to all believers. Both believers and all believers alike dream. And in every dream, there are hidden messages. Hidden messages, secrets that should be understood. Hallelujah. So we saw God speaking to Pharaoh in a dream. And Pharaoh did not understand. So he needed what? An interpreter. He needed a help to be able to grasp what God was saying. He slept the first time. The dream came. He woke up. He didn't understand. So he went to sleep. He was troubled. And the dream kept what in another form. Mm. But said the same thing, but from another hand. He woke up again, he was restless. He had no understanding. So he needed an interpreter. Someone who will show him direction. He will be able to understand the mind of God and be able to break down the communication and tell him what God was trying to say to him. Yeah. Your dreams are important. Your dreams tells about certain things. Yeah. Hallelujah. And I like to uh, say, second to the last one, maybe that's what is called today. God speaks to us through other people, through other people. And so most times they don't even have to be born again. God can talk to you through other people. God can speak to your life through other means. He can even use your neighbor to talk to you. All we need to do is to be sensitive and know that God can speak through us through enemies. By enemies, He wants to get our attention. Hallelujah. If God can use a donkey to speak to a prophet, certainly He can use everybody to speak to you. And lastly, number seven, God uses circumstances to speak to us. Circumstances. Situations. And the Bible was saying to me in Hosea uh, chapter 5 verse 15. Hosea chapter 5 verse 15. He says, I will return to my place until they acknowledge their transgressions. And these people, they will see me in the day of their affliction. So affliction becomes your teacher. It becomes your teacher. Isaiah chapter 30 verse 21. When people are in trouble, they pay attention. Trouble seems to get our attention all of the time. But that's the last and the lowest way, the lowest form God uses to communicate with his children. God does not want us to, because of trouble seeking, he wants us to be able to hear him freely, without stress. Don't wait for trouble before you can hear God.